because I did a little yeah. fast travel for two weeks in Europe, but like between like Turkey and Cairo and all these different countries. And it was, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, but it was also like super, I felt like I was under the gun. Like I needed to see as much as I can. I didn't really get to like enjoy it. Right. In a deep intuitive level. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Campfire Capitalism. I'm your host, Desmond Dixon. And today we have a digital nomad version slash world traveler version slash work remote version of the pod, which we're going to talk about amazing travel aspirations and work-life balance that everyone dreams of with an amazing guest, Miss Kristen uh, Vieira. She has grown into a, a really good friend of mine. It's kind of crazy with what, what, is ha- what happens in the space and her story is so dynamic from, you know, living in the Bay Area to then, you know, moving and expatting to South, uh, South America and really just kind of naturally moving into this lifestyle, chasing after some things that, you know, really matter to her on a deep level. And I'm super excited for you guys to hear about, you know, her journey and how she does it and what she does. Because I think you'll get a lot of value if you have aspirations of traveling the world or leaving the United States or your home country. So Kristen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And I'm just loving this world of digital nomads and how we all connect. And I'm excited to talk more about this lifestyle today. I know you're living it over there in Bali. I'm now in Rio and I'm just super excited to share more of the story to how this all evolved. Yeah. So Rio, I mean, wow, Brazil. I mean, I've, I've heard some, you know, both sides of the spectrum, like how's life in Brazil right now? Like, I, like how long have you been there? Like how long are you planning on staying? Like what's, tell me about Brazil. Yeah. So I got to Brazil about a month ago now and Rio has blown my mind. Everyone talks about Rio and its vibrancy, but I just, I really hadn't done my research, I guess. And I think that's part of when you get more comfortable in this lifestyle, you just flow with it and you start researching less and you just flow with where the travels take you. And that's where I'm at now in the lifestyle. And it's what I love about it is not having set itineraries, letting it evolve with connections, people, places that are your intuition is calling you to. And I was in back in Argentina, which we'll get into the Argentina story, but I was back there for the first time since the pandemic. Uh, It was three months ago, I headed back and I knew I didn't want to experience winter this year. Part of the lifestyle that I love is being able to chase summer and that was an aspiration. So when it was winter, I was like, well, I need to head to sun and Brazil has endless sun. And (laughs) so I came to Rio with that goal of sunshine and experiencing Brazil and with doing little research. And this city is just beyond beautiful. It has mountains, it has beaches, it has the kindest people. It has Portuguese, which I'm very much on the learning curve of, but it is a really cool city and I highly recommend. Oh man. I, I love how you said that you you, don't, you stop planning as much because I naturally move that route as well as traveling. Like I've been in Bali now for a month and I just now like a week ago start looking up, okay, well, where's the waterfalls? Like, you know, what's nearby? And just like every day, you know, on the weekend, it's like, okay, let's just go check out Uluwatu or, you know, go, let's go do this. So it's almost like everything's like kind of a, like a surprise. So uh, I think that's fascinating. Um, so, so talk to us a little bit about like, I know you came from you know, uh, San Francisco and, you know, you're, you're working, you know, working out there. So like, how did you, you know, shift from, working in the Bay Area to this remote work lifestyle in South America, essentially. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Crazy. (laughs) This is the story. So I grew up in the Bay Area, went to college in Southern California, moved back to the Bay Area after college and started working immediately. I went through, I was in public accounting, not a fit for me. (laughs) I went through early career burnout. By my second year of work, I was completely burnt. I just really, I was studying for CPA exams, working extremely 
hard and long hours. And I didn't really, I wasn't in touch with boundaries whatsoever. And I really take a lot of self-responsibility for how I allowed that to happen. Now that I've grown and know kind of how that can transpire, which is why I really promote balance in my life now. So I had early career burnout and I then made a big career transition into HR and recruiting, which I absolutely loved and still love. And I was in the tech space, but something was always kind of, I had this itch always to travel more. And I studied Spanish a lot in college and high school. It was my favorite subject. Always was drawn to Spanish. Can't explain why, but now I feel Latin at heart. So it all makes more sense. But basically I had a draw to travel and eventually this just built and built until I knew I wanted to move cities from San Francisco. I was just ready for a slower pace. So I was exploring the US, trying to figure out a city to move to. And that same timing, I knew I had to leave my job. It was only based in San Francisco, the office. So it was unknown that I'd have to leave my job to change cities. So basically, I decided to leave my job. And in that weekend, I met two people, random friend of friends, who I was talking to in social events and saying, yeah, I'm leaving my job. I'm moving cities. And they both brought up travel. And we're like, if you're moving abroad and change, or if you're moving cities and leaving your job, why wouldn't you just go travel for a bit? And it was like a light bulb moment of how am I not? It's like oh, the obvious, you have to put your stuff in, you have to move your things, you're, you don't have a tie to a job. And so that sparked the inspiration to just take a, a trip and I booked a one-way ticket to Guatemala, Lake Atitlan, uh, because this destination was another friend's favorite spot in Guatemala. And I just knew I, I had heard about it. I was like, I'm going to go there and just travel for a bit and then come back and move cities. So that one-way ticket turned from one month into three months of backpacking solo in Central America. I went down to Colombia. So traveling through Central, down to Colombia, then headed back to the U.S., moved to San Diego, which was my city of a slower pace, entered a new job. And in this new job, the project I got hired on, it was a, a new HR job. I love HR. Now by the beach in San Diego, slower pace, all the things I had wanted. I'm in this job and the project gets put on hold. And so it's within my first month, there was a lot going on with the company. It was a project that was highly confidential and it couldn't continue until something at a higher level of the company played out. It was like an acquisition situation. And so my manager every day, it was a waiting game and I would come in, we'd have small projects, but I had all this time in this fluorescent office and I was like going crazy and being like, what am I going to do? And the travel spark came back and I was feeling this urge again Like, oh, I already miss it, right? It had been just maybe six months since I got back. And at the same time, I meet a friend in San Diego who's another traveler who says, if you could do anything right now, ask me this question, what would you do? And I said, I would move to Latin America. But I literally just moved to San Diego (laughs) and started a new (laughs) job. (laughs) I was like, I can't. I can't do that right now. And so the the friend had sparked this this question, this huge question that I knew what I wanted to do. And then I go back to this fluorescent office with all this time and, and I'm thinking, but I really want to go back to Latin America. And so I decide to start applying for jobs in Latin America because I can't be in a job where nothing's happening. I needed, I need... I need movement. I need to be productive. That's just my personality. And so I just started applying and I start writing the most genuine recruiter and mails I've ever written about how passionate I am about their company. I was finding HR tech companies that I was genuinely interested in and countries that I was genuinely dying to go to. So it was Colombia or go back to was between Colombia, mainly and Argentina. I was finding opportunities and I do not kid you not. I've never gotten so many recruiter responses back because 
those authentic messages came through to them. I know, and this is as now a coach and after working in recruiting, authenticity in your messaging always, always succeeds because that is truth right there. You're speaking your truth and your passion. And I end up interviewing for this job in Buenos Aires. Everything flows. I don't tell my family. I don't tell anyone because it's, I was waiting for something official to announce it. And then I get the offer and I can't even express the emotions when I got that job offer. And I was like, Oh, this is happening. This is now it's real. I have an offer and I took it and moved and up moving to Buenos Aires without ever looking it up on a map without ever visiting the country. I just knew it was, I, I had to do it and life has never been the same. Holy smokes, man. I, man, I gotta digest that. Um, you, you literally like sent it like the definition of sent it, like you followed your intuition and you, you sent it and now you're in, you know, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And it's just amazing how these things parlay and um, evolve, right? So I got a question for you because what you did is not easy. It takes courage. I mean, you did it twice, right. essentially, in a way, right? Um, so like, what does this lifestyle like really mean for you, right? Like, what is it? Like, how do you define it, right? If someone asks you, what is digital? What is the digital nomad lifestyle? Or the, you know, the working abroad lifestyle, like what, how would you describe it to them? Yeah, so... I call it digital slow matting, so slow traveling. And honestly, I just wrote about this this week. I'm not a huge fan of labels anymore. I feel like we are so much more than any label, right? But I, I get it. it has a purpose to help identify our interests and things. So I used to be an expat. Now I'm a digital nomad, right? But to me, it's more how you live it and just your, how you connect with it that's important. And that, to me, is slow travel. And it's immersion, it's connecting with the cultures, it's connecting with people in each place, locals, getting to know their stories, really evolving from understanding the difference of where you came from and maybe your extreme privilege in comparison to someone in this, in a foreign place, but also hearing the beauties of just the differences in how we choose to live our lives in different countries and from different upbringings. And it's just a full learning journey through traveling and experiencing different places and different perspectives and people. And I think slow travel really allows for that because you have more time to connect to the place and the people and you can really experience the culture and that, that and say a two week trip is almost impossible, right? Because you're getting settled. You're, you're kind of getting to know your surroundings. And so I think starting as an expat and then evolving into this lifestyle ha- helped me to find that sweet spot because an expat living, it was two years, right? So that was a lot of time to really feel a part of the place and connect and find community. And now moving into digital no matter slow matting, it's you want to see places. So you do want to move, but you also want that connection. So to, to get both, Slow travel really helps helps have that. And that's how I like to live now that I'm moving more is slowly traveling three to six months and staying open because who knows, someplace may decide to be home again and I'm not close, closing off from that. Man, see, this is why I think how we got connected because I'm also a, a big believer <laughs> in slow travel. And um, I love Columbia, by the way. That was my first, I guess, international stop. I guess Hawaii was the first one. And then, and then Columbia. And I love Columbia. Like I would a thousand percent go back and, and, and post up there. Um, so this, the whole slow travel philosophy is super interesting. And like, I feel like the biggest thing, the anxiety and travel in general is um, the anxiety, the anxiousness to like try to like fit things in. Cause I did a little yeah. fast travel for two weeks in Europe, but like between like Turkey and Cairo and all these different countries. And it was, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, but it was also like super, I felt like I was under the gun. Like I needed to see as much as I can. I didn't really get to like, enjoy it. Right. In a deep intuitive level. Um, so yeah, this is interesting. So 
I love I love the fact that you're staying open and you, you probably encourage that. Mm-hmm. I never expatted yet, which I'm super interested in possibly doing it, getting residency residency somewhere. Um, so let's let's pivot here a little bit because um, mm-hmm. I know that you're really big on everyone has their own unique path, everyone you know has their own needs, wants, and desires. So so like let's just say that you know there's someone out there, they're an entrepreneur or um, you know middle management or you know have, you know, established career, so to speak, right? They're not entry level. Mm-hmm. They have some, some experience and they're interested in, in this lifestyle, right? Maybe like dipping their toe, right? Like, so how would you, you know, what would you say to them, right? Like how would they kind of dip their toe into this? And like, how would you like, you know, move, <laughs> help them like, you know, figure this out? Like what's your mental modeling around that, your belief systems? No, great question. And the, the great thing is they have the work piece. So they've got, they mm-hmm. can take their work remote. Uh, I, I would say we're all unique and especially you. T- this is something you touched on earlier that I want to address is the courage piece. I really feel that this lifestyle courage is like a muscle. The reason that the abroad move was slightly easier, not saying it was easy, it was extremely challenging. It was terrifying, but because I had done the solo backpacking, trip that built the then now jumping countries with different languages also flexes the muscles the more you flex the courage muscle the more risk you're willing to take and i say high risk high reward then you get to live the beauty of this lifestyle and for someone who's new it may be you know that first little flex it's like okay think about your needs what is core to you to make you happy? Maybe you need sunshine and uh, some comfort, right? Some, your language. <laughs> maybe you're not ready to branch into a new language yet. So you pick somewhere that maybe is slightly more touristic. I'm like curating in my mind this destination. Okay, sunshine, <laughs> comforts, comforts of, of your language, but in a foreign country still, okay, I've got it for you. It's Playa del Carmen. <laughs> it's a very, <laughs> I lived there for a bit. It's a touristy town. There's a lot of English speakers. It's on the beach. You're still in Mexico, but you'll be surrounded by a decent expat or foreign community, or I'd say people from comfort from home with that. And you'll also be in Mexico. So you're starting to branch into a new country. And then you can build from there, right? So then it's like, okay, now I'm ready to get a little more uncomfortable. All right. Now, what about moving into a city where the language is spoken more, still have comforts of great restaurants, and there's still a decent amount of expats and English speakers. All right, let's move from Playa over to Mexico City. And and now you're the city vibe in right and maybe that supports with you balancing out work more and so these are ways to go about it but for each person it's so dependent on kind of how how ready are they to flex that courage muscle and what are their (laughs) personal needs you know because some Mm -hmm. people are ready to just go head first into it and i'm all about (laughs) i'm all about that now but it's not for everyone right you might need to build yeah, I, I I think the two things I, I vibe with. The first one is the like courage muscle. I was like, man, I didn't think I, I actually did the same thing. I didn't, you know, like I think the first trip was like Costa Rica for a couple of weeks, right? And then I went to Ukraine for a couple of months. And then after I got back, I was like, all right, I'm ready to get to, like I'm ready to send it, right? So four months later, that you know, I started the journey. So it's kind of funny how you said that. And then the whole courage or the the the, the courage muscle and understanding what you need. Like I know me personally, like just to let you guys know, I care about the beach. Period. <laughs> I've been by water for like three years, four years. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I don't, I hate cold weather. And I learned this lesson when I went to Greece. So I was like, oh, Greece will be warm in March. No, it's not. It's not warm. Literally bought a ticket and left right away. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because I was like, this is a non negotiable. I don't want to be miserable going outside when it's like 35 degrees. <laughs> um, I hear that. 
Yeah. So it's funny. So like understanding your desires and your needs and, uh, and sending it, I think also something super cool is like being okay with, I think with the courage thing is like being okay with, if you didn't make the right decision, as weird as that sounds like, oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And then like not falling into sunk cost fallacy of like, oh, I've already spent this money on this ticket and this time on this place. So I feel like I have to make it work. It's like, you know, if you have the flexibility to like change it, just that's exactly what happened with Greece. Like I was like, oh, I could just, I forgot. I'm traveling. I can do whatever I want. I could just leave. Right. <laughs> like I don't have to, I don't have to stay. Right. Um, so I think that's super important as well. Right. Have you found yourself in any of those situations where you're like, Oh man, I think I made the bad move and I gotta, I gotta pivot. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I love that you're bringing this up and that is the beauty of the lifestyle is that you have remote flexibility. So if it's not for you, you move, right. And you Mm -hmm. like, we're not perfect. We can't predict everything and it's being easy on yourself and not, you know, getting down on yourself or maybe choosing somewhere that Cause you never really know till you're there, right? You can only do so much research. And I think one thing this lifestyle really gifts and something I'm very passionate about is the transformation piece, which is you learn to know yourself better than ever because of the mm-hmm. un- d- uncomfortable situations and new environments you put yourself in. And I think what also benefits you in the lifestyle is knowing yourself what you touched on and knowing your needs and being like, okay, I don't, I'm not a cold weather person. So I know that's not a destination with that right now is not for me. And the more you know yourself, the more you can navigate this and pick places that are for you. But like you said, these situations come up and I found myself in that when I lived coincidentally in the place I had just mentioned, Playa del Carmen. (laughs) And (laughs) it was because I've learned I'm not a huge fan of super touristic towns. And this happened to me when I had to kind of make some decisions in the pandemic after leaving Argentina, which was really heartbreaking since it felt like I was leaving home. But like for many, our plans changed and we had to adjust our lives in the pandemic with a lot of unknowns. And so I had a friend in Playa and that drew me to go to Playa when plans change. And I learned being in Playa that that was not my place. And it was a place for the pandemic, you know, being by the beach, the beach Mm -hmm. was a beautiful part of it. But through the time there, I learned, okay, this town just isn't my vibe. You know, Mm -hmm. I found amazing people still, I found community and I learned so much, but I also learned the feeling when somewhere isn't for me and knowing that feeling and trusting it and moving. And I moved to Mexico City next. Literal, literally one of my favorite places in this world now. And I found dance community. I was in flow and thriving. And it was my reminder, okay, when you feel that feeling, and this is my advice to anyone looking to live it or living it, when you feel that feeling that somewhere isn't for you, and you keep feeling it, trust it and move on because you can, right? <laughs> That's mm-hmm. the privilege we have of being remote. Even if it's like, even if it's like, oh, I don't even like this place I'm living in or the neighborhood, you can literally pivot. I think that was simple as it sounds when you're in the heat of the moment, you're like, oh, you know, freaking out. But it's like, I can simply just send this host a message to say, I want to leave. <laughs> You know, that, that's exactly. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to, I want to pivot somewhere else. Cause I think it's super relevant. Um, and I know you're really, I know you talked a ton of this stuff on, about this on social media and it's about community. Right. So I think, you know, when I, when I left and even as I'm s- still abroad, I think yeah. the biggest thing is leaving the people behind. Right. Because you have relationships, right. We're not just with family, but with friends and colleagues and, you know, you know, your normal day of life. So like, talk to me about like how, you know, you can find the community and like, how does that like, how does that fit in the lifestyle, so to speak? Right. Like, I'm just curious to hear like how you, how you would advise or how you navigate, how you, you know, network with people and build community in these places that you go to. 
Yeah, this is a huge one and a big challenge, I think, for many nomads, especially moving around more quickly, because this is another reason why I'm a proponent for slow travel, because community takes time. Finding your people takes time, whether you're moving cities in your own country or in foreign countries, right? So there's a lot of different ways to go about this. And thankfully, now that digital nomad, the, like the community is growing worldwide, there's a lot more resources resources being created to support this. I really love to connect with local community with locals. And so I think it's great to attend. One way to find community is, is of course through finding digital nomad events, digital nomad groups, and to find that community of travelers, right? So things like meetup, using WhatsApp, using Facebook groups is a great way to find that. For me, that's great to have and I like to attend those, but local Finding community locally and immersion is so core to me for how I like to live this. So the way I go about that and I suggest is really connecting with your passions, your hobbies, and using things like Google, uh, talking to people in cafes, looking around for flyers that are often posted, and looking for ways to engage with those hobbies in a new environment. And again, knowing yourself, knowing what excites you, what you enjoy doing will allow you to find these events through resources like Google, talking to people. Also, WhatsApp can be a resource when you connect with people. And then going to those events. And then that evolves into like-minded community because you're investing in something you know you enjoy and is a passion for you. And you meet other people who love that too. And then they're often locals because you find these local events. So then you're also learning about local culture and connecting with the local community. And I think that's a beautiful way to find community and invest in your passion. And for me, that new outlet has been dance. And it's, I was just reflecting last night because I just started Zoop classes here and found this amazing studio with the it's just the vibe I can't even put into words. The kindness of the teachers, they're treating me like we've known each other for years. And I love that because I'm I'm so new and I'm also new to Zook. But it makes it's made me feel so welcome. And I just knew I was like, this is my new community. And I know I'm I just signed up three times a week <laughs> and I giggle to them of like, I'm this dedicated new student because I'm here to learn, but I also just feel this place is for me. I can feel it, you know? Um, so I guess there's a piece of intuition of tapping into when you go to these events, how you feel around the people, because you know, when you feel comfortable, of course, there's always discomfort when it's new, but you can sense when it's your people, you know, and leaning into that and connecting with those people. Um, but one thing I will say is this area takes time to get more comfortable. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And so for those who are new to it and maybe struggling, I completely hear that and I was there. So leaning into that discomfort more and more and just being you and being authentic and bringing, just fearlessly bringing yourself to these situations will evolve into this comfort level where you just flow with it. And now I'm not afraid to go to event alone. I'm not afraid to go to an event, a local event alone. And that would terrify me way back when I started. Man, that was good. That was good. Uh, it's easy to stay in the house and watch Netflix and or whatever. Um, that was huge. That was huge. There's some nights for I, that though. Some yeah, yeah, absolutely. That in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Just to chill. Right. I think um, <laughs> being a, being a workaholic because I like I I I don't know what it is but you know I think finding the balance like we were just talking about this before we recorded like you know yeah. going on walks and detaching from your laptop and um having giving yourself grace essentially right it's pretty it's pretty pretty critical in this lifestyle because it's easy to fall into you know a hole <laughs> so to speak right yeah um yeah, this was great. So just real quick, give us an idea of 
you know, how people can find you. Cause I know that you probably, we probably get to literally keep going for like hours. Cause you have so <laughs> yeah. much, uh, like you do this all day, every day. So, you know, people are more interested in like, you know, transforming into this lifestyle and want to know more information. What's the best way to find you? Yeah. I share pieces of my journey on Instagram and you can connect with me there. And it's Kristen C. Vieira is my handle. And then also you can find me on LinkedIn at Kristen Vieira. I'm also sharing more openly about the full journey there. And I have a website as well. And that's kvieracoaching.com. And yeah, this is literally my passion. I've shared, I could talk about it all day because I just love this lifestyle so, so much. It's literally the best thing that's ever happened to me, honestly. Just moving abroad was the best. I think it's four years this past weekend. And I was reflecting that I really think it's the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. <laughs> like my life has forever changed. And I don't think I would be who I am right now. I mean, I wouldn't had I not made that decision. And that's why I say always follow your intuition because it never, never leads you the wrong direction. It's huge. And awesome guys. So I will definitely leave all those links in the show notes and definitely mm-hmm. go check out uh, what, what Kristen is doing. So thanks for coming to the campfire, hanging out with us and vibing. Yes. Thanks for having me. It's so fun. I love to chat about, I just love to chat about this lifestyle and with another nomad too. Heck yeah. So guys, congratulations. You made it to the end of the show. I really appreciate you for giving me your most precious resource on the planet, which is your time. And uh, we're super grateful for you. So we'll see you at the next campfire and uh, keep crushing it, capitalists. Cheers. Cheers.